They're massive beasts, pumped up to the max for the ultimate thrill. Fans look at it, monster truck drivers and trucks as superheroes, as something bigger than life. With mega attitude that drives these behemoths to incredible highs and lows. I think the thing that people get excited about is just seeing something get tore up. And still, these giants are full of shocking surprises. Monster trucks by their design are intended to fly. Pop the hood, get behind the wheel, and discover the birth of a mechanical marvel. Same people are absolutely crazy about monster trucks. They fill stadiums in search of the roar, the energy, the spectacle, and their favorite champions. You don't see big things like that get to go as fast, and you just don't expect something that big to go that hard. There's more going on here than a passion for ear-splitting noise. Behind every mega machine is a monster loaded with cutting-edge technology. Maybe people who don't really know much about our sport, you know, they got this idea that we're a bunch of rednecks out here messing with our big trucks with our big tires. Yeah, no There's some pretty ingenious people behind the scenes in this. These trucks have come a long ways over the years. My truck definitely is nothing compared to these. How does a monster truck compare to a pickup? Let's take a look. Your standard pickup is six feet tall and six and a half feet wide. A monster truck is four feet taller and a full six feet wider. The weight? Your pickup is just under 4,000 pounds. A monster truck? At least 10,000 pounds, including more than 2,000 pounds in tires alone. And power? Well, you don't even want to go there. Your typical pickup is about 230 horsepower. A monster truck, 1,500 horsepower with an acceleration of 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. People do not realize they have an acceleration rate um, second to, to none. I mean, these things really move. And topping that off, some monster trucks can jump 30 feet high and turn on a dime survive heart-stopping rollovers, and of course, demolish everything in their path. Center for Automotive Research Director, Giorgio Rizzoni. Monster trucks are extreme vehicles. You've essentially taken each one of the characteristics of the vehicle to its limit. Everything is larger, stronger, sturdier. done everything you can think of with them. Of course, crush cars and race with them over dirt obstacles, do wheel stands. They are tremendously agile, powerful, graceful. But the best way to discover the amazing technologies behind these monster machines is to get under the hood and build one for yourself. That's what they're doing here at the epicenter of monster truck mania. Bigfoot 4x4 in St. Louis, Missouri. My name's Roy Hooser. I'm the chief mechanic here at Bigfoot 4x4. Roy's been working on monster trucks for 25 years. In this garage, he calls the shots. This truck we're building is Bigfoot 16. It's going to be our best truck ever. It's, it's going to be a race truck. Their race truck, which will cost them about $75,000 for parts alone, will have hydraulic rear steering for maneuverability nitrogen shocks for durability, and a top-of-the-line fuel-injected racing engine. The only problem is this new truck has got to be ready for action in exactly 10 weeks. Just in time for one of the biggest monster truck events of the year, the Vermont Four-Wheel Jamboree. Obviously, we can't send something out that's not what we feel 100% able to do the show. We've got our driver safety at stake. Wow, look at that turn. Oh, my goodness. Perfect turn for Bigfoot. The first thing that comes to my mind when people mention Monster Truck, I think of Bigfoot because he pretty much started it all.
Indeed, he did. It all started in 1974 when Bob Chandler, a St. Louis contractor with a knack for auto mechanics, began tinkering with his Ford pickup. To me, I, the, the bigger the tires you could put on a truck, the more I liked it because it looked more massive and it would get me more places when I went off road. I kept putting bigger tires on the truck. My general manager called me Bigfoot because I couldn't keep my foot out of the throttle. Bob settled on 66 inch tractor tires and passed his nickname on to the truck. Bigfoot began drawing crowds to Bob's auto shop, and the word started to spread. It drew a lot of attention. He kept working on his truck and building it up. And somebody called it a monster truck and the name stuck. Two years later, Bob was still tinkering with his mega machine when he had an idea for a bold experiment. Little did anyone realize, out in a field near the shop, Bob was about to take monster trucks to a whole new level. I went out one morning and drove over these cars, and it was very simple. It just drove right over the top of them. I came around back and drove again and stopped on top of them. A uh, promoter saw it and said, I want you to do it in front of a crowd. But this was no ordinary crowd. This was a huge truck pull event in front of the packed Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan, the heartland of Motor America. The ultimate fans, the perfect crowd to evaluate the merits of any mechanical marvel. We had 68,000 people at Pontiac Silverdome. They set the cars up for me, I went out, and we kind of went around behind the cars and drove up on them and stopped. The crowd just literally went nuts and 30,000 people came over the walls. I mean, it just surrounded us. The car crush rocked the motor world. In a blaze of lights, Bigfoot and monster trucks entered the collective psyche of America. Soon, other truck builders and thrill seekers began emulating Bigfoot, and a new industry emerged. I used to mud race, I used to street race with drag cars. Uh, wanted something with a little more pizzazz, a little more wild, a little more excitement. So I went into, you know, monster trucks. Back at the shop, Roy and his team are assembling the first critical component of Bigfoot 16. Over the next 10 weeks, they'll install axles, suspension system, steering, engine, the body, and the tires. But right now, it's all about the chassis. It's the backbone of any vehicle, and for a 10,000-pound monster truck, it's got to be reinforced for maximum strength. A tube chassis has diagonal braces that make it stronger in parts where it needs to be stronger. But it wasn't always that way. Starting off, monster trucks were very fragile. I mean, you could barely drive over cars and hope you didn't hurt something. Uh, most of the chassis were a two-and-a-half or a five-ton military frame, which is just the standard truck frame. Standard frames were heavy. And worse yet, once competitive high-speed racing began, they weren't up to the incredible stress monster trucks put on their frames. I've rolled my truck over a hundred times. It's going over. Oh, hit the brakes. Whoa! You know, you're done. You're on the roof. You're climbing out. It's done. You hear fiberglass crunching, metal kinking. You hear all that. Monster trucks are even capable of forward rollovers, as seen at a 1985 Indianapolis, Indiana monster truck show when Bigfoot driver Jim Kramer pushed a steel frame chassis to its absolute limit. It's the finals, you know, we want to win this thing. The back end hit a car, knocked me up, I'm going toward the stands. And the truck straight up and down on the front wheels. People talk about time slowing down. In a stressful situation, something happens. To me, it was like five minutes, even though it happened in a split second. I was able to wiggle out of the truck before it caught fire, and I come out of there with some glass in my eyes, and that was it. But I was safe. Jim Kramer is a very lucky man to have been able to walk away from that one. It totally flattened that cab out flatten the bed out. That's when we were convinced that we have to do something different about the roll cage. In 1988, monster truck builder and driver Dan Patrick believed he had a solution. Using two-inch hollow steel tubing, 
He welded together a next-generation chassis that was both super strong and 4,000 pounds lighter. Since that day, Dan's company, Patrick Enterprises, has built more than 70 chassis. His design is considered the monster truck industry standard. At any given event, usually 50% of the, the trucks that compete are Patrick Enterprises chassis. The chassis we put out today are about 700 feet of tubing. Today, he's creating a custom chassis for a new Hulk-themed monster truck. Dan's design is dense with crossbars, especially within the roll cage, the foam-padded vertical extension of the chassis that surrounds the driver. This is the roll cage up on the main frame. We have X bracing that goes in each corner of the rear loop down to the frame. So if the truck rolls over and hits in that corner, that load, that impact is actually going all the way down to the frame. The roll cage's main objective is to protect the driver from the impact of a crash and make sure he's not thrown from the vehicle. For competitors in traditional one-on-one -on -one races, Dan's innovation meant greater speed and safety. And for those who wanted to push the technology, it paved the way for a new form of competition called freestyle. A series of wild stunts that still bring the crowds to their feet today. It's like standing in line for ice cream. The racing's standing in line, the ice cream is freestyle. But I just like to cut it loose. Let the people, let the fans see what they want to see, and that's freestyle. How do you shockproof a monster truck to survive the impact from a 200-foot jump? At Bigfoot 4x4 outside St. Louis, Missouri, the build of Bigfoot 16, their next great monster truck, is underway. It's slated to make its debut at a national racing event in Vermont in just seven weeks. And head mechanic Roy Hooser and his team are just getting started. Okay, let me, I'm gonna lift it up. You wanna pull the, the cart out from under? They finished the welded steel chassis. Next, they need to install the axle, the steel rod that delivers power from the engine to the wheels. I wonder why I need to see a chiropractor. Since monster trucks first laid rubber to dirt, the axles were due for a major upgrade. After the first change I made on the truck, which was the tires, the bigger tires, uh, I found out the next weak link on the truck was the axle. I kept breaking axles. As engine power increased and the trucks took on more extreme maneuvers, the stress on the axles mounted. Even a five-ton military axle designed for a massive military troop transport vehicle failed when it faced the extreme power of a monster truck. And our mechanics took this truck and beefed up the axle so much, and this axle was massive. But we'd still take that truck out, jump 15 cars, and land on the front end and split the housing. It's a lot of force. Given Bigfoot's reputation for stomping and crushing, you'd think that impact caused most of the brakes. Surprisingly, the real problem was rotational force, also known as torque. Instead of moving an object linearly, torque is a force that causes an object to rotate. But cutting down on that force only meant losing power. The secret to saving axles was redistributing the force through an innovative technology called a planetary gear. This is the planetary unit. This is what you see here, and this is what we'd put on to reduce the load on the axle. The axle shaft runs through the middle of the housing and drives a set of gears inside the planetary hub. The planetary gear is named for the three gears that orbit its center. Placing the interlocking gears of the planetary inside the wheel took the pressure off the axle. This will turn three times to the ring gear is one. So each time this gear turns three times, this gear turns one time. And there was another big plus to the planetaries. They stepped up the horsepower and delivered a new surge of power. 
you're starting out at 1500 horsepower at the motor, you multiply that through your ratio, and that makes some serious power at the end. And that's why these trucks go as fast as they do.